When we look back at our railway history, we remember some of the railway pioneers well. For example, George Leeming, George Stevenson, George Hudson, the Railway King, and Isambard Kingdom Brunel. But today we're going to look at a gentleman who built the longest railway bridge in the world. But it collapsed in December 1879. Welcome to the history of Sir Thomas Bouch. Thomas Bouch is known for designing the Tay Bridge, the longest railway bridge at the time in the world. But it was a Tay Bridge disaster that put Thomas Bouch into the history books. The central navigation girders collapsed on the 28th of December 1879, killing 75 people, now estimated at 59. This railway engineer has a bigger story to tell. His stations, bridges and railway lines are still running today. His many years of railway engineering have been seen by some historians of disappearing into the River Tay at 1915 on a very stormy evening in 1879. And the views of Scotland's railways could have been very different. Thomas Budge was born on the 25th of February 1822 in Thursby near Carlisle, North West England. The second son of four children, his father was a retired sea captain but died when Thomas was only 17 years old. The death of his father in 1838 led him to take up an apprenticeship in Liverpool with a firm of mechanical engineers, but he found it was not for him. So just before his 17th birthday, he found employment on the Lancaster to Carlisle Railway as an assistant to one of the civil engineers who was constructing the railway. Later, after a short spell working in Leeds, he became a resident engineer on the Stockton to Darlington Railway. In 1849, he became manager engineer of the Edinburgh and Northern Railway, later to become the North British Railway. During his years, he was responsible for designing many railways, bridges and stations. He part designed Edinburgh Waverley Station. Railway lines he designed include the Jedburgh Railway, Peebles Railway, Kinloss, Leven Line, Leslie Line and St Andrews in Fife. Creef Junction, Coatbridge to Edinburgh, Edinburgh Suburban, Pennycook Railways are brought to Montrose including designing the bridge over the River Esk at Montrose. The Lancaster Union, Eden Valley, Cockermouth, Keswick, Seven Oaks to Maidstone. He also designed many railway bridges and also designed the world's first roll-on, roll-off railway ferry. He also designed Portobello Pier near Edinburgh, but in 1917 it was demolished due to rust. His railway ferries ran from Granton to Burn Island across the Forth and Tayport in Fife to Broughty Ferry, Dundee, across the Firth of Tay. Further designs include a tram system in Edinburgh, Glasgow and London. With his continuing success, he left the Edinburgh and Northern Railway just before it merged with the North British, but continued to work for the North British Railway as a consultant engineer, having been accepted as an associated member of the Institute of Civil Engineers in 1850. In 1853, he married to 21-year-old Margaret Nielsen. They had three children, Fanny, Elizabeth and William. Working on the River Forth, Budge became friendly with the legendary Stevenson family of civil engineering and lighthouse engineering. The Northern Lighthouse Devil was close to his train ferry at Granton, but he also got friendly with Edward Sang of Kirkcaldy, Edward Sang was a gifted mathematician. He worked in Edinburgh as a civil engineer and lectured on natural philosophy. He also was a professor of mechanical science in Manchester. Sang and Bouch worked together with Sang's prodigy, Edinburgh civil engineer and photographer Robert Henry Bow. His book, Economics of the Construction in Relation to Frame Structure in 1871, 
plus a thesis on the raising in reaction to bridge and other structures in 1874. With all this calculating power to hand and working in Edinburgh on large-scale projects, Budge's reputation in the railways grew. His reputation also grew, as some said many of his designs were built on the cheap, charging only £100 a mile. The average was £500 a mile. With his work on the Forth and the Tay, Thomas Budge became obsessed to build a bridge over both rivers. The North British Railway was in a race with the Caledonian Railway, a race to the north. The Caledonian Railway from London to Aberdeen ran up the west coast to Glasgow, then Glasgow to Aberdeen via Stilling, Perth, then ran to Forfar to Aberdeen. The North British Railway ran from London to Edinburgh. The two rivers were currently crossed by ferry and this took time. The North British Railway knew that building a bridge over these rivers would save time. So it was only a matter of time that bridges would be built over the Forth and the Tay. But the planned crossing point meant crossing a vast amount of water. Thomas Bouch designed a bridge to cross the Firth of Tay and the design was accepted by the North British Railway Company and work started in 1870 after a bill was presented to Parliament a year earlier. 600 men, 6 years and during that time there was many alterations to the original design. 20 workers died, some as young as 15 in the construction of what would be the longest railway bridge in the world. On the 31st of August 1877, the City of Edinburgh was looking forward to the visit of General Grant, ex-president of the United States of America. General Grant was given the freedom of Edinburgh and the next day he travelled by train with distinguished guests on board from Bonn Island to Tayport to see the bridge. They viewed the bridge from the ship Mars, a former warship. It was reported that one of the railway directors travelling with the general said to him as he sailed under the bridge that this structure must surely take its place as one of the modern wonders of the world, and General Grant agreed. After many setbacks, including one which the centre girder collapsed into the river during a slight storm, the bridge finally opened on the 26th of September 1877 for test trains. In 1878, the company's heaviest engines travelled over the bridge and then the bridge was inspected by Major General Charles Scrope Hutchinson on behalf of the Board of Trade. He restricted the speed to 25 miles an hour and recommended that he observed a train passing over the bridge during high winds. And that never happened. The North British Railway can now open their bridge to the public. Opening to passengers on the 31st of May 1878, with all of Dundee celebrating this remarkable engineering structure on their river, nothing like it had been seen. The sheer size of the bridge, the spectacle of seeing a train running over the bridge with its whistle blowing and the steam belching from its engine was an awesome sight for all Dundonians. With the Tay Bridge opened and the North British Railway making money and their new station at Dundee, the Tay Bridge station, situated next to the Caledonian Railway at Dundee West Station, plus a new tunnel which would link the railway up towards Aberdeen without changing trains, Thomas Bounce's attention was now on the bridge over the River Forth. He planned a railway suspension bridge across the Forth. The North British Railway had obtained authority in 1873 to build a bridge over the Forth. This would be the world's only railway suspension bridge and plans were approved and the first foundation stone was laid in September 1878.
In late June 1879, Queen Victoria travelled over the bridge on her way back to London. Thomas Bouch was presented to the Queen in a short stop at Dundee Taybridge Station. The whole of Dundee came out to celebrate. It was reported that Thomas Bouch travelled on the footplate as a train travelled over the bridge. A few months later, Thomas Bouch was on his way to London to receive from Her Majesty at Windsor a knighthood. And he would receive another honour, the freedom of the borough of Dundee. There was concerns with some people in Dundee and Fife about the safety of the Tay Bridge. Some trains seemed to be travelling too fast over the bridge. The maximum speed was 25 miles an hour. Some rivets were reported falling off. The bridge used to shake in strong winds. The bridge was inspected at intervals, but nothing was done regarding the speed of trains, and there was a rumour that some train drivers liked to race across the bridge simply to get off it quickly. During hurricane force winds, the bridge collapsed at 19.15 on the 28th of December 1879. We seem to forget that first reports of 300 people or more dead or missing shocked Dundee to its core. The world was shocked as reports of the disaster reached out to all. In the end, it was reported 75 people dead, no survivors. Only the engine survived. It was dragged from the water and restored at St. Rollocks in Glasgow and was named the diver and went back into service for years. Recent reports suggest the amount of people who died in the Taybridge disaster, these men, women and children, was 59. My other film, The Taybridge Disaster, explains in more detail the possible cause of the disaster. The true cause is not known, but there are many theories. After the inquiry, Sir Thomas Bouch was blamed for the disaster due to the number of major structural changes he made from his original design. Sir Thomas Bouch was relieved from service by the North British Railway in July 1880. By August, he was ordered by his doctor for complete rest. Despite an apparent recovery after two months of illness, Sir Thomas took a turn for the worst, a cold, which led to his death at the age of only 58 years old. His design for the fourth bridge was abandoned in 1881. Design for a new bridge was invited by the newly formed Fourth Bridge Railway Company. With the aftermath of the Tay Bridge disaster, the Board of Trade insisted that the fourth bridge should have the capability of carrying the heaviest of freight trains. John Fowler and his business partner Benjamin Baker, with their cantilever design, started work on the fourth bridge in 1883. With some people calling the fourth bridge Scotland's monument, if Thomas Bouch had kept to his original plans and with more understanding of the pressure of wind on large structures, the two largest railway bridges in Scotland would have been very different. Sir Thomas Bouch was an innovator engineer. He designed hundreds of miles of our railways that are still in use today. His name is found in history books due to the Taybridge disaster. But many don't realise this railway engineer was part of shaping Britain's railways. <laughs>